What's up guys, Tommy Bowie here from Movie Rewinds and today we will be reviewing Hellboy. So without further ado, let's get into it. So in terms of character development, I really enjoy the character development of the first Hellboy film. Ron Perlman is brilliantly cast as Hellboy and I like the idea of the development for Hellboy that what makes a man a man? This is the fundamental question that this film asks. Is it his origins or is it how he is brought up? So basically the nature versus nurture debate. And I like how they do that with Hellboy. You know, is he just born to be this key to unleashing hell or can he be a force to prevent darkness from occurring? And I like that development. As for the development of the other characters, you know, Myers is kind of just there. He is the audience in a sense, you know. He's supposed to go wow when the audience says wow. We see the film kind of through his eyes. However, I do believe that, you know, his storyline was kind of exhausted by the end of this film. So it was a good idea not to bring him back in the sequel. As for the other characters, I like Liz. I think she's got a likeable personality and I like the villains as well. While this Rasputin kind of looks nothing like Rasputin, I still think, you know, he is quite a scary villain. He has a presence. So in terms of character development, I'm going to give that a 9 out of 10 because, quite frankly, I like the questions that this film asks. So as for the performances, as I've already said, Ron Perlman is Hellboy. He's kind of one of those characters like... Heath Ledger, for example, you know, I can't see anyone else portraying Hellboy other than Ron Perlman. And of course, I know David Harbour did try, but we're not going to talk about that. Ron Perlman is charming, he is witty, he is funny. However, there's a lot of layers there. He's a very developed character and you can see the conflict he is going through. So I really like Ron Perlman. Selma Blair is really good as Liz. To be honest, she's just as good as Ron Perlman. She's cast perfectly. She is also very funny. However, you can see the conflict in her as well. As for all the other actors and actresses, they all do phenomenal jobs. John Hurt is brilliant. You know, John Hurt never usually isn't a bad actor. He's always a really good actor and I really like him in this film. So as the, for, for the performances, I'm going to give them a 10 out of 10 because I can't fault the performances. Now, the effects in this film are phenomenal. I mean, I know that this film uses CGI. The CGI is good. However, because it was directed by Guerrero del Toro, there is a lot of practical effects in this film. And that's what I like about it. I really like practical effects and all the effects done on Hellboy, done on Abe, they're all done really well and they look really realistic. So in terms of the effects, this is an absolute quick one, a 10 out of 10 because they use practical effects more than they do CGI effects and that's just brilliant. The story and writing is also done really well. I like the whole story of this film. It's all about the occult and as I've said, because of all the development, you have the nature versus nurture debate, and I really enjoyed that. There are not a lot, and there's not a strong variety of, you know, monsters of that. So if you think this is like a typical monster film, it's not. There's a couple of monsters in this, there are quite a few villains in it. However, to be honest, I really enjoyed the story of this. It was emotional, it was action-packed, it was funny. It had all the right ingredients for a comic book film. And to be honest, this film is very emotional, you know, the ending, you feel a bit emotional about it. However, you do feel good that Hellboy and Liz finally got together because they do belong together. So you do feel, you do feel a bit happy by the end of this film. In terms of the story and writing, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 because quite frankly, I really enjoyed the story. They obviously put a lot of hard work into this and I like how it mixes in the occult stuff as well. So you get quite a lot of dark themes. So for this film's special recognition, I'm going to talk about an interesting topic, and that is the villains. Now, I think the villains in this film are really good. As I, I've already mentioned Rasputin, I think he is quite an evil presence. And the other villain who I really like is Cronin. Now, Cronin as a villain I find really interesting because he doesn't have any dialogue. So everything he does has to be through his movements, you know, he wears the gas masks, so it all has to be through his movements. And 
I really like him as a villain. I don't know what it is. I just really like him. You know, he's a badass. He can easily kill people. The final fight between him and Hellboy, I found, was really, really interesting. And part of me wishes that Cronin could have been in the second film. I know that, you know, he weren't needed in the second film. However, I really like him as a villain. So, for the villains, and especially Cronin, I'm going to give Special Recognition a 10 out of 10 because I really like the villains in this film. So in conclusion, Hellboy is a funny and very dramatic film. It's a brilliant adaptation of the comic books and I really like Ron Perlman as Hellboy. And that is why Hellboy gets a 48 out of 50, which gives it a grade 1 ranking. Honestly, the Hellboy remake was so bad that I had to watch this film straight afterwards just to get over it. I'm not even joking. So this Hellboy film, this is the definitive one. And this is the one which I don't think they're going to top. So thanks for watching, guys. I really do hope you enjoyed this Hellboy movie review. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe in order to receive great and maybe even improved quality content in the future. And I will see you in another one. See ya.